hello you guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i want to talk about the things that i experienced in church that made me wonder if i was in the right church or not so if you are interested in knowing those things then keep on watching sometime last year 2021 i was listening to the radio while i was driving going to fetch my kids from school and this guy calls into the radio and explains how he is unemployed and he has moved back to his mother's house and he was staying there with his mother at the time the main reason for him moving back to his mother's house was that he was gonna have security in terms of food and shelter while he looked for employment but his main reason for calling was that his mother was not providing that yes he had shelter but i think at the time that he moved in she was still working but she wasn't really doing much she was taking her money to church as time went on she went on pension and she took her pension money and still went and gave it to the church and he was really worried and concerned about this because she was hardly doing anything for her home and you know actually when i was listening to his story at first i thought but you are supposed to be the one bringing money for food at least because she's providing shelter she doesn't seem to be complaining about the provision of the shelter but at least bringing food but then his concern was that all the money that she got from her pension was somehow ending up in church he did try to talk to her that didn't even bother her she continued to give the money to the church he indicated that he came to a point where he decided to even talk to the pastor about what was going on with this with his mother which in the end didn't really quite work in his favor and she continued giving the money to the church and this guy was really really frustrated during this call you could hear it from his voice and i had a few thoughts while listening to this at that time um, I couldn't pick up my phone and call into the radio one I didn't know the number but I was driving so I couldn't even send a whatsapp message or a voice note I felt like I had a lot to say at the time but then by the time I was my hands were free I think that segment was over so I decided let me bring it here and share it with you guys and let me know your thoughts on this my main focus is not really that the the guy is of age enough to bring in the money but my but my focus is mainly on the church this is my two cents my first thought was that this pastor will not give up or is not going to be willing to easily give up his source of income that was not going to happen the worst thing that probably could happen was that uh, this pastor is probably now encouraging this woman to continue to give the money to the church. He was he he was not going to give up his own source of income. And you know, sometimes when this happens, people get labeled. They call people names which is all these things that we deem as evil and bad that other person will be called that name in order for the, for the one who is in church to feel comfortable enough to continue to bring whatever this pastor is getting from this person another thing was that i don't think this woman is doing it on purpose she is being influenced and the influence is coming from the pastor she might not see it in that way because the influence is more spiritual than physical physically he will say words to give her comfort um, enough to continue to bring in the money things like they don't want to see you prosper yes he's your child but he's working against you you are working for the kingdom of god and he is not they will convince you to a point where you don't even know you're right from your wrong you're left from your right that goes away because this man is in control if you are not spiritually awake and aware these people are captured hey i have my own experiences slowly i will bring bits and pieces of what 
I personally went through. Being called a demon, I have been called that in front of my husband and my kids. So I know what I'm talking about. That's why I feel so encouraged to make this kind of video. The last thing is that whatever this guy says to his mother, she will not hear him. Whatever he says is not justifiable. It's not justified. It doesn't make sense to her. And unfortunately, because he sees the truth, it hurts him. It's hurting the rest of his family. And honestly speaking, what I know is that you can't just talk to the person and they and then they will snap out of it. No, it is a spiritual thing, and the pastor knows what he is doing. They know what they are doing. And him looking in from the outside, he can see what the pastor is doing. And unfortunately, the person it is being turned to is the one that is blind. It's like they put something over your face, over your eyes that you do not see. My question is, have you had or do you know of someone who has had a similar experience in church where they became so unreasonable with the type of service that they're giving to the church that made you as an outsider, made you as a child of this person question what was really going on there. If you have, please comment down below. I will tell you about things to look out for towards the end of this video. But first, I want to tell you about my own experience, how I managed to get out, right? God is always working. God is always doing something. God is always looking out for his children that I believe with my whole heart. I feel like I went into this church, I was in so deep that I was blinded by whatever they had put over my face. I was so committed to this church. Every service that took place, I was there. There was no way. Whether it's an all night prayer, I'm there pregnant <laughs> i started going to this church while i was pregnant during that pregnancy towards the end i did not care about the fact that i was pregnant i was there tuesday service i was there if they say all night prayer on friday i was there i was there my friend used to complain and say but you always attend you attend all of these things me i was kept hard <laughs> i believe i was kept hard Look, I, let me say, I was, I was in so deep. So let me tell you about what happened when I got out, right? I'm not going to focus on, I'll, I'll tell you in another video, the things that used to happen in that church. But let me start here. A few years ago, I was in a church where I believed every word that this pastor said without question everything about my life revolved around this church to a point where even when my husband spoke i never used to hear him i would be the one questioning him if he had spoken to the pastor before making decisions that is how bad it was my husband was going to the church but he wasn't as committed as me mind you <laughs> i wasn't even aware of this while i was still going to the church I only realized this after I left. Um, one thing about me is that I was fortunate enough that God revealed certain things about this church while I was still there. Though it did not make sense at the time, it made sense after I had left. A few months before I left the church, I had a dream. In this dream, I was fighting. I was fighting inside a house and I was trying to get out. In, the, in this house, there were, it was the three of us. It is me, this pastor, he's big. Physically, he's not big. I was seeing another pastor that I knew, but I knew it was him in disguise and his wife. The wife is standing beside him. The man is fighting with me. I was standing my back was against the door and I was trying to get out of the door and this man kept pulling and fighting me to stay inside. I felt, I fought so hard. And then at some point I just found myself now facing the door 
and this man in front of me. I decided to, to, ju to just stand and watch. And there was a room next to that main door that I wanted to use. So now this door is on my right and I can see this woman is standing there and this man is inside. And I decided, you know what, if I run as fast as I can, I can get out of this. One thing I know is that I need to get out of this house. So I decided to go for the door. Before you know it, this guy is in front of me, standing in front of the door, blocking the door for me to get out. Like, this guy was so big. So I'm busy fighting, fighting, and then I stood back and I remember looking to my right and seeing this room that was to my right. His wife was just standing there at the threshold of the door, looking at what was going on. I look at the face of this woman and I realize this is a hopeless situation. But for me, I need to get out. I then turn back and see a door. And when I peeped in and I saw a window, and then I walked into that room. So as I'm walking into that room, according to the, I don't know, I think according to this man, I'm going back inside, I'm not going out. So if I'm going into a room, it means I've accepted defeat. So I go into this room, I'm looking at this window, and on my way to the room, I meet this woman. And as I meet her, I look at her, and she didn't, she, she kind of like, had a more relaxed look than the guy's wife and that she was, I don't know, she, she looked like she was happy to be there. I don't know. But I remember I passed this woman. So passing her, I go inside this room, I close the door and this man doesn't follow me. After closing the door, I turn face the window and I'm like, there are butler bars on the windows. And I'm like, hmm. I think this is a dream. I cannot be fighting like this in the physical. It's not possible. This is a dream. And if this is a dream, I can get out of this. I remember thinking, if this is a dream, then I will be able to bend the buckler bars and get out. So I went to the windows, grabbed the buckler bars and bent them. And I could. I bend, you know, I, I didn't even pull them out. I just moved them and they moved and I said like oh okay if this is the case then I'm out of here open the window and out I went and I left that house guess what I do physically me you know there was this thing that hey in this church the pastor would tell us to tell him our dreams this is one thing that I found odd but I at that particular time, I couldn't question further when he said such things. So he said, we needed to tell him our dreams. You know, whatever dreams, funny dreams, and all of that, we needed to come and let him know the kind of dreams that we were having at the time, while we were in that church. What does my shudu do? I approached him and I'm like, hey, I had this funny dream, and I explained that dream to him. He couldn't say a word, he just looked at me. He said nothing. And after a few moments of silence, he said he would look into it. Funny enough, he said this. Most of the time that I spoke to him, he would look into it. That was the end of the conversation. I left, it was in the evening, I think it was a midweek, so Tuesday or Wednesday, I, can't I think it was a Tuesday service. To tell you that when I talk about this capturing, that it really happened, Listen to what uh, happened after I left. Now, after I left this church, um, like I said earlier, they would call us demon. There are certain people in the church that he would want to pray for. With me and a friend of mine, the two of us were amongst those people that he wanted to pray for. If like God shows you something, this guy knew he would want to pray for you. Something good that you see in the spirit, this guy knew and he wants to pray for you. How I actually left the church, I went to church on Sunday, woke up first thing in the morning. I called my friend. We used to talk very early in the morning 
at the time I was went working, she was working, and we would have our calls around between eight nine. Would have a phone call, but this day I decided to call her at seven. My first words were, "If you see me in church this Sunday, know that this is where God wants me to be." I don't know why. I didn't know why at the time I said those words. I didn't plan. I just woke up and felt a sense of I needed to disconnect from that church. That's how I left. I think about two weeks after I had not been going to church. You know, when you don't go to church, you will tell the pastor that ah, I'm not coming to church. I'm going to. I'm going home. I'm doing one, two, three. I mean, it was to a point where even when we decide to go to Limpopo as a family, we would make sure my husband and I would make sure that come Sunday nine o'clock, we are home. We're going to church, exhausted as we. And this would have been. I'm telling you. Most of this is happening while I'm pregnant. I feel like it feels like I was pregnant most of the um, for most of the time while I was there, but it wasn't. I think about six months of my pregnancy, I was in that church. So it feels like a long time because we go home, we didn't want to hear anything. There was no church that I would enter. I would not go into any other church unless it was recommended by that man unless it is that man's church never went to any other church except for his dream it's almost a, it was about almost a two year period i decided that i'm not longer going to this church and i stay home my husband was shocked and surprised why, why i would do that obviously i explained to him and come sunday i don't go to church following sunday this pastor decided to pray for my friend sometimes he would call people out by the name to pray for them and as he does that he is calling on he would say you demon that's what he used to use he would say you demon he calls her and says he wants to pray for her and her brother always used to record services so he's recording and he sends me this clip in that clip he's like i want to pray for you and i don't know he will touch or i don't know can't even remember raise his hand or touch i can't remember but then he says to my friend where is my shoulder me referring to me and she responds she's like oh, she's not coming back she's not coming back she doesn't know the way back here and he's like no she needs to come back she needs to she, 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 you must open her, the way for her you demon I, I, you must get out of the way my heart breaks and at that particular time i, I wanted nothing to do with the church after listening to this i was convinced that something was definitely going on there that why does she say my i cannot see the road back there number one number two uh, why is he casting out demons to open the door for me when i spoke to my friend and told her that i wasn't i said if you see me in this church on sunday know that god wants me there do you get it know that god wants me there now why would i wake up and say such words and then this man comes and says you demon who's the demon here my god about a month after i left the pastor's wife talks to my friend and asks her to ask me if I'm willing to talk to her. And I said, no, I don't have a problem. You want to talk? Come and talk. But know that um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not coming to you. If you want to talk to me, come. Come to my house. She came. And the, my friend is like, this is, the, uh, this is actually what my friend said. He's like, she's saying she wants to come for lunch. And I'm like, oh, I'll tell her that. She's like, it doesn't make sense. You are work, you're not working. She's working and she wants to come to your house for lunch. I'm like, I tell her that me, I don't have money to be hosting her. I have enough food for my family. I don't have enough food to be hosting her. So she tells her and she's like, no, she's going to come. So she came. I think it was a month after I had left. Came and I didn't tell her my dream. There are things that happened in the last two weeks of me going to that church. I told her of the incident that happened on the last day I was in the church. And after me narrating my story, she said, 
it made sense she understand and i never got a phone call from her i never got a whatsapp nothing i deleted their contact and everything but one thing that i remember is that it was like i was having withdrawal symptoms you know I'll, come sunday i would have this urge to want to go there i would have this urge on tuesday to want to go there and at the same time i had hatred for anything that related to this pastor how many months to even recover from that experience a couple of weeks two weeks ago i was talking to my friend and she's like she feels like she was spiritually abused and i said exactly how i felt after i left the church i just didn't have words to describe i used to think yes i feel like i was spiritually abused i didn't know if it was a term that i could use but when she used it and validated what i felt after i left that place that was just confirmation for me that it's true we were abused spiritually not just it's not just me it's not just her there were other people but anyway we will get into that in another video you know there are things that you could look out for in your church to see whether you are in the right church or not is the church founded on jesus christ yes jesus will be mentioned but the life of this pastor the life of the people around this pastor the lives of the so-called leader do their lives resemble the life of christ and that's the first thing that you need to look out for um i've heard stories people will say ah cause my prophet no harm hey all of these things hey one one those are words that we use to blind ourselves and justify the actions that are contrary to what god desires for us and we justify to ourselves and other people making this man look righteous even when he's not there are a lot of diabolical things that happen in these churches my second point is that you need to listen to the words that these pastors use and the god that they refer to he will usually refer to his own god you know let me give like the god of mashubu they will call on a name that you've not heard of a name that is not even in the bible and then they will say the god of mashudu and then you call this other name what are they calling this name for it's usually demons those things and then you will, you you will come and you say the god of mashudu uh -huh. the god of mashudu what how do you know that my god is there in my yard is there in my house in my shed you don't know this but you're calling on that god because i presented that god to you in false pretense and you call on that god me i had name i'm just not going to mention names or even people's god's names i don't want people's gods to be famous i'm not going to bring that up but they will call on their god they will label that they have stickers and they will label those god their gods on those stickers you put it on your car you put, are they asking for money <laughs> are they asking for money before you see the pastor <laughs> i'm laughing because honestly speaking the church that i was in me <laughs> the church that i was in in that church i that guy oba akuchanta oba akuchanta that guy i remember he would tell us eh hey, you need to pay when you come and see me the things that i do for you <laughs> the prayers that i offer for you i deserve payment i'm no longer going to receive people for free he used to say that little did i know or there are things that he's seen out there that other pastors are doing other pastors are on higher levels he wants to get to that level this man used to go to a particular church all i know is that i want to this church that he used to go to he used to say no if you are not here you can go to that church right so me hmm. after having left all that nonsense in that church I decided to go visit this church thinking ah the story that side is different. After going there twice I think I sensed in my spirit that no this place is not different from where I'm coming from. It's like similar things are operating. And this one time I decide they will um they will give out a number and say call this number if you want to see the pastor 12323. So me hey, me Yeah, I like to 
I want to see, I want to hear. Then you go on and you go far. What do I do? I call the number. Mm. I should do. Call the number. When I call the number, uh, hello, hello, how are you? I'm fine. My name is Mashudu. Right? Mashudu, what does the person do? She now switches and starts to speak in Venda. And this voice, like, is that commanding voice? That voice that's like, uh, you know, if I tell you this, that's it, my word is final. I, you can't convince or change my word. We, that kind of way, that, that's how she sounded. Okay, Mashudu, mm, oh, I'd like to see the pastor. Uh, hi, Ubonawa from Zindi 5000. That mean me? It's like Ubonawa from Zindi 5000. That 5000. But uh, she's like, yes, 5000. I'm like, eh, 5000. Just to say, Pastor, I need prayers. Make an appointment to go and see this man of God, so called. 5000. She says, yes. Do you want to continue with the appointment? I will call you back. Did I call back? No. Where am I going to get at the time? I wasn't working at the time. I was like, where am I going to get 5,000? 5,000 rands to see the pastor. See, some of us, Holy, the Holy Spirit will let you know, give you this, nudge you in the right direction to say, this is not the right place. But me, I wanted double confirmation. I called. With the spoke of money, that's when I'm like, okay, fine. Lord, I hear you. If you're in a church and it doesn't feel and sound right it usually isn't because the, and the only way for you to confirm this feeling is if you go back to your father go back to your creator go back to god and ask him god how why am i feeling like this ask god himself to reveal to you what is really going on in that place about the church and the pastor himself specifically he will do it. That is how I left the other church. He revealed. I'll tell you in another video how he showed me things that convinced me that I did not have to be there. The other thing is, are you unsettled in your spirit? Are you unsettled in your spirit? Because if you are, you're probably not at the right place. Jesus said he will give you peace. Peace that surpasses understanding. And that's Philippians 4 verse 7. You can go and read that for yourself. But if you do not have peace about a particular thing or a place, just know that God is not in that. He is not there. The Holy Spirit is probably warning you with that unsettling feeling that something is not right. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably enjoy these videos about my church experiences. See you in the next one.